If you're a fan of big planes, historical games, World War II, or the new Masters of the Air miniseries, then today's Blast from the Past video is going to be a real treat for you. We're going to look into Microprose's B-17 franchise, from its inception as a DOS and Amiga game in 1992, through to its sequel, and into upcoming titles. Also, by looking at the history of the B-17 franchise, we're going to be able to examine the rise and fall of one of the biggest names in the 80s and early 90s computer gaming, Microprose. What happened to the company once credited in 1987 as one of the top five computer game companies alongside EA and Activision, and is its planned revival by new CEO David Leggett, including multiple B-17 spin-offs, enough to get this company back off the ground, or will it simply crash and burn once and for all? Let's start out with some background info. It's the summer of 1982, and General Instruments, an electronics company that once supplied chips for the Intellivision console, sends two employees to a conference in Las Vegas. Employees Bill Steely and Sid Meier, yes, that's Sid Meier, skipped out on the boring sales presentations to play video games in the hotel arcade. Meyer challenged Steely, an Air National Guard fighter pilot, to a game of Red Baron, and the two hatched a scheme to make their own game when Meyer quipped that he could, quote, write a better game in a week. Two months later, and the company was selling its first game, Hellcat Ace, developed by Meyer. Before the end of the year, Microprose, the company they founded in Steely's basement, had four titles, all written by Meyer, and was turning a profit. While things looked great from the outside, inside, the company was starting to fracture. Prior to the IPO, Bill Steely and Sid Meier had different ideas on the direction of the company, so much so that Meier quietly sold his stake to Steely. Meier continued his role in the company so Steely could pursue his plan to diversify into RPGs, arcade games, and the creation of their own graphic adventure game engine, Microprose Adventure Development System. However, by the time of the IPO, the arcade division was a major loss, and soon to close. The other projects were not far behind, mind you. Wait a minute, you're telling me that the Mads engine flopped? But it had games like Rex Nebular and the Cosmic Gender Bender developed for it. It was during this time that B-17 was developed by Leeds-based Vector Graphics, which was purchased by Microprose, only to be shuttered by them a few years later. I see Microprose was doing the EA thing before it was cool. Gameplay-wise, B-17 is like several mini-games stitched together into one bigger picture. If you take full control, there's the flight sim when you take off, land, and have to adjust to battle damage by doing things like diving to put out fires. Then you've got the navigational challenge. Keep the player from simply using time skip from takeoff to bomb run, the navigator will occasionally get lost, wiring the player to use landmarks replot the position on the map manually. Then there's the air combat side of the game. On either side of the bomb run, that's when the Luftwaffe comes out. 109s, 190s, and 110s will try to blot your formation out of the sky. The bomb run itself involved matching up dials on the bomb site to align with the target, and of course also correctly identifying that target against your memory of what the reconnaissance photo and video looked like. And of course, throughout it all, there was the crew management sim, the staple that held it all together and helped it feel like one fluid game. Specific crewmen were best in certain positions, but they could be wounded or killed, so you'd have to possibly replace a navigator with a radio man. Maybe both pilots would be wounded, and just the bombardier is trying to fly the plane as it limps home on two engines. Like with the real air war in 1943, this is by far not an easy task especially if you're new to the game. Upon release, the game was met with mixed reviews. Computer Gaming World's review by William Shevsky was less than generous, and it lamented a lack of content beyond the November 43 start date, among other things. When I look back on it, for $70 game in 1993, he's kinda got a point. And there were several complaints related to poor performance, especially on certain Amiga devices. Despite the company's struggles, Microprose was able to release a B-17 sequel titled The Mighty Eight, while it was briefly owned by Hasbro. In addition to the Bomber Commander mode from the previous game, the sequel included historical missions and my favorite mode, Squadron Commander, where the player controlled literally everything. Primary, secondary, and tertiary targets, waypoints, routes, release altitude, and even which future targets would get reconnaissance flyovers. He even had to swap out crews, take bombers offline for maintenance, and do all of this while still flying the missions. In addition, the sequel also allowed the player to hop into other B-17s in the squadron, fighter escorts, and even the German planes for some reason. However, upon Upon release, the game was very unstable and soon rendered obsolete. A later revival on Steam has helped a bit, but some people still report instability in longer play sessions, and this is a game that can easily take several hours for the more complex missions. 
Today, Microprose isn't just rebooting the franchise. They're quadrupling down on it in an attempt to revive the company. First off, The Mighty Eighth is getting a redone version, kind of like Age of Empires Definitive, but for B-17. This is basically the same exact game, but hopefully updated enough to run better on modern machines and not have those kind of performance issues. Next, there's a new reboot called The Bloody 100, and that's slated to be released alongside a VR co-op game called B-17. Flying Fortress, the Mighty 8th VR, in which all the fun co-op and multiplayer aspects that should have been included in the Bloody 100 are instead stripped out for their own game to try and sell on VR. Lastly, a former competitor's game, Bomber 3, being remastered and released as well. Not only that, but the bulk of Microprose's new products just seem to be remasters or spin-offs of their old ones. Even Sid Meier's Pirates looks like it's in for a reboot with Rise of Piracy, slated to come out quote-unquote soon, whenever that might be. I'm not gonna lie, when I first heard about the new B-17 coming from Microprose, I was super excited. But after the delays, and hearing about how four different B-17 games are in the works for Microprose, and how all the co-op options are likely going to be specific just to the VR game only, I'm a lot more pessimistic now. What do you folks think? Are there any upcoming Microprose games that have you genuinely excited? Let us know in the comments what you think. If you're a fan of video game history, strategy games, or historical games, then don't forget to subscribe and check out some of our other content. Thank you for watching!